I started uh, doing graphic design. I'm from Holland and I did graphic design at the Royal Academy. And uh, I had a fantastic teacher there and got really into letter forms and lettering and drawing letters. And then he'd been to see David Kindersley and he said, if you really want to know about lettering, you should go meet him. So I went to a conference where I know I knew he would be there. And uh, indeed, he was there and I saw him across the room and walked up to him and he showed me the things he was doing. And I thought, that's it. I'm going to do that. That's my life. And so it took me a, an, an about a year to put my foot in the door and uh, him to take me on because he was in his 60s and he had done apprenticeships all his life which uh, of course I'm committed to apprenticeship myself because that's how I learned. I was quite a failure at school and uh, when it came to learning here by doing it it was just so clear and fantastic. Well, before anything else, I'm going to sharpen some pencils, I think, because um, without any pencil, without a point, there is nothing we're going to do. It's very important, a pencil doesn't come like a, you know, like a sharp thing, so we have to really make it sharp. I'm going to do that with a knife, it's a very simple process, and cut off the end bits. It's very satisfying work, this. Um, so you first sort of remove quite a bit of the wood. In fact, it is a bit scary when you look at it, the amount of wood that you get rid of. Then, of course, you still don't have a sharp pencil. So what I'm going to do is to sharpen it with a piece of wet and dry paper. This is 400, so it's sort of, and then just sharpen it. Now, when you do that, you really concentrate on sharpening the wood. And as long as you keep the wood fairly straight and turn the pencil as you go along, um, the point will come with it. So there are three reasons why you should have a sharp point. One, of course, is if you don't make a point, you know, if you don't have a point on your pencil, you can't actually make a point on what you're drawing with. The other thing is that if you get heavy handed or insecure, you know, it's like people shouting when they're insecure. Uh, if you push the pencil on the on the slate, all of a sudden it will break because you've got such a fine point. I mean, it is so fine that it won't take any tension at all. So there are very good reasons for um, sharpening. And the third most important reason is to get yourself in the right frame of mind to make sure that you really, really concentrate and that you're ready for the work you're going to do. So with this sharp pencil, I'm now going to draw out the letters. I have already drawn out a few lines. I mean, normally you, you sort of put the ticks on and put the lines on, but I've done that already. So I'm going to draw my word, um, starting here. And when you start drawing a letter, I'm left-handed, as you can see, so I'm starting, you know, from this direction. That is quite important throughout that, uh, that this is clear that I'm left-handed, so I do it the other way around. Uh, and then I draw out the rest of the letters in the same principle, from this point down around. This is going to be an E, so I'll do the serif here. The serif, again, is home-going, so it's, it's got that same feel to it. And uh, the thickness will be about this, I would think. Then the center one, okay, again, slightly in, slightly round. Um, somewhere here. And then the next letter. And the serif in through the thinnest point and out and round here with this serif. And then the bottom of the D is a nice curve here, and the top comes straight out. That's the important bit. And then you really, really make it swell here. There's a lot of tension going sort of that way, a lot of tension until you get to the widest point, which is about the center, it's about halfway high. And then you start coming back in, so that's when the tension is on that side. So you sort of come round, 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 back to the serif. And then the thickness um, is slightly thicker than the upright, so I suppose it's sort of here. Round. 
and there. Now this is good enough drawing out for me to cut. Obviously if you're designing a typeface you would draw this much more precisely but this is more than enough. Now this is set out, that's the important thing. In the workshop of course at that stage we will spell check because the spell checking is, you know, if you can get a spelling mistake it's a real bore. So um, somebody else will have to check it. I can't check my own spelling because it always looks right when I've done it. Um, but once it's spell checked and we've got it on this, on this in this case piece of slate, slate from Wales, um, we're actually going to go into cutting. Now cutting, like uh, drawing, you don't just go straight in, you've got to get your right tools. Now first go and get my tool kit. Sharpening chisels is done wet, so I put some water on. And at this stage it's very important to listen to what you're doing, because when you hold the chisel very loosely, you just put it on your hand and put one finger down, um, you can hear it. I'm, I'm going to stop talking. You can hear when I hit the sharp edge. Do you hear that? So you, you slowly move it up. Can you hear that? So that's what you want to do. You want to have it sort of nice and flat and then go towards that cutting edge. That's perfect. Now there's a final little touch on the very uh, smooth sharpening block. I just put it upright and flick it. And that means when you sharpen it one way or the other, you get a little bit of a flap in between. And if you just flick it off, you get the final absolute sharpness. Now we've got a sharp chisel. If you look very closely at the chisel, you can see there's a little bit of uh, brass there and that keeps the tungsten tip in the steel shaft. The chisel should be slightly wider than the width of the letter form, so that is absolutely the perfect chisel for this letter form. Put the chisel very just loose on your hand, about that length, it's about the length of a finger. Uh, what do you call that bit of a finger? Just a top bit of your finger and you put it by your little finger here in that and you put the other end on your by your thumb so that you can't grip with the thumb that's the whole idea you put the thumb out of action you don't want the thumb in action um, and then you fold your fingers over and you hold it now that's very loose it's just lying loosely in it and the reason for that is that when you hit it you hit it very loosely and the whole blow will go straight through to the tip so if you were to hit it very, ah, well, if you were to hit it very hard, you would actually um, lose all your pencils as well. That was not quite a plan, but you would uh, so you would get the full blow right to the tip of the chisel. That's the important thing. Now the other thing needs to point out is the dummy. The dummy is absolutely round. It's completely round all the way. So there's only one point on which you can hit it. And if you miss that point, if you hit it the wrong point, you hit your hand. And you learn very quickly. There's absolutely no doubt that's, that's not done for a lot. And so you just hit it on that point. Now there are, it is in fact a line, it's not just a point, it's, it's lots of points. And if you hit it very, very low here, you get very small taps. And that's very good when, for instance, you set in at a serif and you need to hardly touch it. You just get light, light, light touches. But then, when it comes to giving it a real swing, you actually hold the dummy much lower down and you hit it much higher and then you have a real swing. Oh, you can see it, it just really comes out. You get a real swing. It's very loosely. The, the chisels and the dummies and all your tools, all your mind, everything you're using is relaxed. And the moment you begin, become insecure, you don't know what you're doing, that's the moment when you start tensing up and you bend your back and you get into a real thing. That's what you don't want. You want to really be relaxed.